Hello, this is Dr. Gary from First Sick MRI, and this is a case from a friend of mine. He had a patient who had nonspecific neurologic complaints, including headache. He had had a lumbar puncture in the past and had an old MRI scan here on the left, and on the new MRI scan, he had some striking changes. So this is a view on the left. We'll go over the anatomy real quick. This is the pons. This is the medulla, and the medulla turns into the spinal cord going down into the spinal canal. All the white stuff is fluid surrounding that. And we see the bottom of the cerebellar tonsil here. The tip of the cerebellar tonsil is right here. This is the occipital bone here, the bottom of it. This little triangular bone is the clavus. And from the base of the clavus here across, there's a line. And it's really the foramen magnum. And we don't want the cerebellar tonsil to go below that. If it does go down below, it can be related to something called pseudotumor cerebri. And in this case, uh, the patient came back, and they do have cerebellar tonsillar ectopia. So this is the cerebellum again. Fluid is now dark rather than bright. And this is uh, a lower image. So to get oriented, this little triangle here is right up here. It's bright, filled with white fluid. Here it's dark, filled with dark fluid. This is the base of the uh, occipital bone here, the very tip, which corresponds to here. So this is the line we looked at before. Now we're looking at the line from here to here. So if we look at this line from here to here, we see that the tonsils go way down below that. And the uh, upper cervical spinal cord is displaced anteriorly and compressed. Actually, the, the midbrain is too. This is the pons. Before it was rounded. And now the pons is flat and has this really unusual anterior contour. The medulla is down here, so there's lots of pressure on the brain stem. Again, the cerebellum is too low in position. And actually, the pons is very low in position. This is the top of the pons here, about near the top of the clivus. And the uh, pontomedullary junction, this is the pons. This is the medulla down here, so this is the junction right at the bottom of the clivus here. Now, this area is down here. So this is everything is shifted down. Up here, shifted down. Tonsils have shifted down, so it looks as though this is not a QR malformation that's been there their whole life. This is a new finding, and the whole brain is going downward, getting pulled down into the spinal uh, canal, the cervical spine. Also, we see this, this the mammillary body here, and this is the pons, and the distance between these two is usually significantly higher than this, um, but instead this is a narrow distance, the pontomammillary distance, and so this is um, associated with this. And so this is a case of intracranial hypotension. If you just had this one image, you might think, oh, maybe this is a carry malformation because the tonsils are too low. But if we look more carefully, we see there are the other findings of narrowing here. And also, uh, these patients usually will have MRI of the brain with and without contrast. And we see a pattern of diffuse dural enhancement that's really classic. But in this just one sagittal T, uh, one-weighted view, we see something that looks, again, at first glance like a QRM malformation, but comparing it to the old one, realizing that the findings are new and not longstanding, and the other associated findings, this is a case of intracranial hypotension. So they had the, the lumbar puncture, and they had a tear of the dura, and the CSF leaked out, causing low pressure, and then this is the sequelae of that low pressure. Now this can be spontaneous. Um, it can be from a, a traumatic event. It can be related to prior surgery where they have to go through the dura and the dura just never closes back up. It's often related to this uh, lumbar puncture. So we see it most commonly in radiology. But again, it's a case of intracranial hypotension that looks at first glance like a QRM malformation. Thank you very much.